What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a vintage Kenner Star Wars market update. We've got the gamut here. Everything from extremely high-end items. This is how the 1% of collectors live. Let me tell you, I've got some seriously, seriously expensive stuff in here. So starting with those, and we got everything all the way up to some last 17 and some less expensive stuff that's kind of more in keeping with a normal person's budget. But... Uh, you know, just, just a wide, wide variety that sold, and uh, I did confirm on a number of these high-end items that they did sell for those prices because I didn't I didn't think it was real, but uh, I don't know much about some of these, and uh, it's just nice to get some data points for, for some of those high-end items because it's not, it's not a market that I play in regularly. But let's dig right in. This is Collectible Investment Brokerage, who's affiliated with AFA. We've seen a number of their items. Uh, for sale over the years, and uh, Ron does a great job down there. I bought from him before in the past. He had this one, which was a uh, display header, and so th these would be kind of in bins uh, at retail, so retail point of purchase displays, so to speak, from uh, from the original line. And so this is 1978 display header, uh, 12 action figure. So this is you know a very very early kind of first 12 display header header for uh you know at, at retail for for the the vintage star wars figures as they were coming out and so uh it's a it's a beautiful item you can see where it's got the slots on the cardboard for uh slotting into one of those bins where they would uh, typically display the first 12 figures for sale so pretty rare pretty rare and it was listed uh, for thirty five hundred dollars and uh, it was an afa 80 plus Thirty-five hundred plus fifty dollars shipping, and that did sell. So pretty, pretty interesting item. Not not an item you see pop up very often. There are a number of different kind of shelf talkers. You know, have like a little uh, tiny rectangles that would go on top of shelves. You have all, all kinds of different point of purchase displays. But this would be kind of one of the very early ones that was that was out there at retail back in 1978 when those first 12 figures were hitting the market. Um, okay. Here is uh, the earliest of the early 12 backs. So these would be kind of the, the types of mint on card figures that, that appeared in those display hitters in the boxes. And so this is the 12 back A with the SKU on the footer. So the very earliest 12 backs had those SKU numbers on the footer inside the blister. And uh, you know they're, they're, these that, that denotes these 12 backs as the earliest production runs for the figures. So they're very, very desirable among high-end collectors. And they're also extremely expensive. And this one is a high-grade AFA 85. AFA 85. Pretty incredible item. And I did confirm that this was a, a, a true sales price of $13,000. Uh, we saw at Hakes, I believe. It, it was either Hakes or um, a Certified Link. There was a 12-back A SKU footer Obi-Wan that sold for a little over $10,000. And uh, speaking with Jeff E., who is a very high-end collector that collects this kind of stuff, he said that that was a little high. But uh, I, you know, I'm sure you might want to chime in here in terms of whether this price is fair or not. But you got to, if you've got an AFA 85 SKU footer R2D2, I got to believe if the Obi Wan sold for ten thousand dollars plus, then uh, this is probably not terribly far off at thirteen thousand dollars. But just an insane item. That same seller also had an AFA 85 Stormtrooper, 12 back A Stormtrooper. And that one was listed for $10,000. And that one did sell as well. So uh, just some, some pretty incredible, very, very early 12 backs that sold at auction this week. And I just thought I'd share those for those of you who are actually in the market for this kind of thing. Well, outside of anything I would say I would spend unless I wanted to find myself being murdered by my wife. Um, there were some loose graded figures that also sold, and I, you know, this seller has always has stuff for sale and always has very nice high grade stuff for sale at auction. And I feel like his auctions always go for way above market. Maybe not always, but very, very commonly they do. And this one was a semi-metallic 2-1B droid, and it had that kind of pearlescent finish that you can see on the head there. Um, so, you know, I, I get it. I get it that it's a cool figure and it's got kind of like a weird you know, factory paint finish to the blue on the 2-1-B droid. And it was, but it was an 80, it was an FA-85 semi-metallic marble variant. It sold for $465, quite a, 
question mark i mean I, I don't i don't know what's going on with that price that seems really ridiculous to me for uh for a loose graded figure and uh, i would be curious to know from any of you that are 21b experts whether that price seems ridiculous to you as well and so you know you can see the paint there it's it's got something interesting going on with the head there. It almost looks like a crack in the in the head, but it must be something to do with the paint. Uh, very cool paint job, and I have seen these before, and they're, they're pretty desirable. You can kind of see that marbleized finish there at the top of the head, um, and I've seen a number of these kind of examples, but $465 for that just seems uh, pretty crazy to me, but that's what it is. Another figure that we talked about, uh, Chris W. from Rogue Five Toys, and I talked about in a recent live stream, uh, that continues to go up in value and will continue to, in my opinion, this year is the Hoth Luke Skywalker. More and more of these ungraded are just showing up, even if they've been unplayed with, they're showing up yellowed. They're just, they're starting to yellow like the Stormtrooper and like the Leia, the Princess Leia first 12 figure, um, the Hoth Stormtroopers. These white figures are just getting harder and harder. The, the Cloud Car Pilot's another one. They're just harder and harder to find in high grade. And this one was a, a recent case, AFA 85, at auction. Beautiful figure. Beautiful figure. That one sold for $480. That's kind of in line with what the UKG 85 sold that we had in a market update, I'd say, about a month ago. I don't remember exactly when it was. But that was a UKG 85. This is a AFA 85. And they both sold for about the same price. So, uh, you know, it seems like that is going to be the new Leia, the new Princess Leia. Princess Leia last year was going for $500-ish or higher, and now they're closer to $600 for an AFA-85. It looks like the Hawk Luth, Luth, Luke Stormtrooper is going to follow that same path, and he's, you know, almost $500 now for, for a high-grade one. Um, staying with the Hoth theme, we had a qualified 80 uh, Rebel Armored Snowspeeder. So it's, it's got the nice blue sky background there's also a pink box background uh you can see here it says blue box on the label so there's two different boxes for that i don't know which one's more rare i would think that the blue box was more common that that one seems to be the one i see the most of but there is a pink background uh, for the for the box as well instead of the blue sky but this one was qualified 80 so that means that all the contents are untouched but it is open it's an open box it's not factory sealed anymore that did not stop the sellers, or excuse me, the buyers from, from making bids. That one sold on January 4th, 25 bids, $1,300 plus shipping was the final sales price for the Empire Strikes Back Blue Box Rebel Armor Snowspeeder. So pretty cool item, but, uh, you know, in terms of whether that's a fair price or not, eh, I don't know. I mean, I see them sell for about that on Facebook. Um, you know, ungraded, you can you might get closer to $1,000 if it's still high grade and has the the insert inside the box and the, you know, everything's untouched. You, can, you might get a thousand dollars for it if it's if it's not graded. But uh, uh, anywhere from eight to eight to eight hundred to a thousand dollars is about where I've been seeing this ungraded, but qualified condition. You know, untouched, unplayed with condition, still sealed baggies, things like that. Um, so that gives you a data point there. Um, <clears throat> the Wampa is another interesting item you know is still in the box with with the fold that you know the, the box had those long folds like you saw on a lot of the mini rigs and uh you know if that fold is still intact and hasn't been creased and all that you can get a, you know really high numbers for for those still mint and sealed box i mean i've seen i've seen them sell as high as fifteen hundred sixteen hundred dollars depending on the box if it's the u.s box versus you know the meccano box things like that buy logo boxes but the un the the loose graded examples are also uh, they command big dollars and um, AFA used to loose grade those so when you see those come up for sale AFA graded loose graded wampas those go for big money because AFA doesn't loose grade those anymore uh, UKG and collector archive services do still loose grade the wampas and this one was a UKG 85 which might be a little generous you know because the the torso and the arms the, the, you can see there's a little bit of yelling going on there but it's, it might be a little generous. It's probably more like an 80, but whatever. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's a nice example. You know, most of the time you see a lot of wear on the hands and on the horns, but uh, the hands, especially the fingernails, tend to get a lot of wear. But the, this one had a little bit of wear on that hand, but this hand was really nice and clean. But you can see there that the, the legs and the torso don't match color. It's just the same problem we've talked about. Uh, with the Luke Hoff is that you know these are starting to yellow pretty heavily. I've got a loose one and it's it's crazy. It's like so white. 
it's more it's more white than this one but unfortunately it's not like grade quality condition it's pretty beat up it's my childhood one but uh, it's interesting how some of them uh, yellow and some of them don't but uh, but anyway, this one sold for 305 US dollars, 225 Great British pounds, plus shipping. Um, so just gives you a data point there for a nice, clean Wampa. Uh, this one was beautiful, too. This was a 41 back D Bosque. This was AFA 80, but it was very faint yellowing on the blister. And you can see there it is, you know, it's labeled as yellow dash near mint underneath the, the overall score of 80. Sub scores were 80, 85, 80, but a, a, I mean, it's a, it's a nice Bosque. And... Bosk is another one of those characters that we talked about in the live stream that's, that continues to go up. And Mint on Card, they are going up like crazy. Uh, there was a 32 back B, I believe, that was on Deal or No Deal on Facebook this past week that I bid on. And I gave up about, I think I offered 875 was my final, or 775. I don't remember what the price was, but it, was, it wasn't it was enough that the seller was willing to take it. And it, it shot up from there. And I, don't, I still don't think he's accepted an offer yet, but it was a 32 back B. Um, boss that had a clear blister AFA 80 and uh, really nice item. But I mean, if this one's selling for 875 yellow blister, then my 775 offer wasn't going to cut it for a clear blister on an earlier card back. So wishful thinking on my part, but this is uh, just gives you some more data points. But I think any Empire Strikes Back clear bit blister, especially Bosks, you're going to be approaching a thousand bucks now, and that didn't used to be the case. It it's it's just kind of in the last year or so that that's happened. Um. Here was a, another yellow blister, 48 back Revenge of the Jedi. This was uh, Forlom slash Zuckus, depending on, on who you ask. Uh, this was Collector Archive Services graded, graded 80 plus. Um, you can see there the, the subscores were 80, 85, 90, yellowed, uh, yellowed blister, obviously. But uh, again, this is the deb debut card, I believe, for Forlom. Someone mentioned that there might have been a... a another card back. So I, I might be incorrect on that. There might be an earlier 48 back or uh, even maybe a later 47 back that uh, came out after the four LOM offer 47 back. I, I don't know, but this is one of, one of the earlier ones and the most common one for four LOM on the Empire Strikes Back. There might be some very rare examples of, of other card backs. I, I haven't checked the Kellerman matrix or anything like that. I'm I'm a loser. I'm, I am a loser. Don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm a nerd, but I haven't checked that. But <laughs> I, I, I seem to remember a subscriber correcting me saying that this is not his debut card, that there is somebody out there, that uh, that, that there is another card back out there on the Empire Strikes Back for for long. But anyway, that one sold for ten fifty five plus shipping for a yellowed. So I mean, that's a high number to me. I've seen that sell even fairly recently for underneath that for a clear blister. But uh, you're going to be paying a lot. No, no matter what, at the end of the day, you're, for a four lom on an ESB card back, you're going to be paying a lot of money. It's just a very desirable one. This one was, I, I don't know what was going on with this. I don't know if the sellers just, or excuse me, the, the bidders just didn't care or what. But, you know, there were three 41 back stormtroopers. Uh, it looked like one of them had a clear blister. It's very, it's hard to tell, but that one looks fairly clear. These two were very clearly yellowed, but it looks like they were all 41 backs. But, the problem is that all three of them had damage on the back. The, the proof of purchase was cut off on, on all three of them. It, it still sold for $1,625 plus $20 shipping on 44 bids. I, I mean, to me, it's really, don't get me wrong, I know that a Stormtrooper on an ESB card back is pretty desirable, but to pay that kind of money for cut pop card backs is, is crazy to me. I, I mean, I'd rather get, instead of getting these three, I'd get like one 20 back or one... Uh, you know, one really high grade one and pay that. Cause I, I don't know how you make your money back on those. You're paying over $500 a piece on those for cut pops. And, and that, to me, that, that seems too high, too high to me. <clears throat> this one was kind of in line and I had, there was a, a subscriber slash Patreon supporter Spiro that was looking at this. This was the uh, top toy Argentinian El Regreso del Jedi Stormtrooper. And he asked me what I thought I would sell for. <clears throat> I, I, I thought I would sell for closer to $800. Um, but it was a nice clean card. Uh, you can see these are pretty pretty rare. Um, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, and the Stormtrooper are the three most common for the top toys. Uh, the Chief Chirpa and the Low Gray are probably a little bit more rare, but still doable. Luke and Yoda, good luck. I mean, you're paying extreme money for those, a lot of money for those. There was never a Lando skiff, to my knowledge. It was just shown on the card, but... Uh, but, but I think Darth Vader, Stormy, and Chewbacca are all doable. And this one, 
you know, it had some kind of weird funk going on, like glue or something going on. I don't know what was going on inside the blister there around his knee. Uh, it could just be discoloration. I don't know, but it looks it looks legit. It looked like a a, a, a legitimate seal. Um, you know, there's the tape there for the weapon. So I, I don't know what's going on there. It's you know, it's a little. It probably what what's that's probably those kind of weird things that are going on, like the glue around the knee and then the tape on the opposite side there. You know, uh, that, that could have been what held back the, the final value, but uh, it looked to be a legitimate mint on card top toy stormtrooper. And that sold for 605 on 41 bids. So, you know, again, at the end of the day, you're getting a stormtrooper, a top toy stormtrooper, plus the card back. And what's notable about these top toys, I think all of them, they don't have peg holes underneath the feet. They're all just flat, um, you know, without any peg holes. So, and I believe they're either shorter or taller. I can't remember. I, th I think they're shorter, if memory serves. It's a shorter figure than than the standard license figures. Um, another figure that we've talked about that is going to continue to go up in value is the Biker Scout because of the white that we talked about. This was a UKG 90 Taiwan. So very beautiful example of crystal clear white on that figure. And, um, you know, it's a UKG 90. I mean, anything 90 grade is going to be expensive. That one sold for $339 plus shipping. Um, but a very nice figure there. Uh, we had a mint on card AFA 80 yellowed 79 back A Boba Fett. And the prices continued to, to go up on these. And uh, that one sold for $4,600 on free shipping. Big number there, but um, you know what are you gonna what are you gonna do if you if you want a Boba Fett mint on card, even Return of the Jedi, you're gonna be paying big money these days. And uh, I've got a few last seventeen figures, as well as some Palatoy Tri logos that also sold. So uh, first, let me show you this Lumat. This was a CAS graded eighty, and it looks like it was an eighty overall. The sub scores were 80, 80, 85. and um. But, a, you know, a clear blister, obviously, since this was the Made in Mexico Lumat. Really nice one. Uh, those those blisters, you know, they use a different type of blister than the U.S. Kenner cards. So those uh, tend to stay nice and crystal clear. It's got the Anakin offer. That one sold for $500 plus shipping. So another data point there. And this one was a nice one. This this seller had a number of Tri-Logo also that I'm going to show you in a second. But he had this one. This was a... He labeled it as a Canadian, and it is. This is the Canadian 77 back A uh, for Paplu. So another last 17 made in Mexico, but this was for the Canadian uh, Canadian market. Um, and so that one, it looked to be in pretty good shape overall. Probably, I'd say an overall 80. Uh, that one sold for $180 plus another $11 shipping. So pre pretty good deal, I think, for a Paplu there. You can see the French. A partir de, de quatre ans. Ages four and up, um, but a, a really nice example. I think that's that, that probably scored eighty overall. All right, this same seller, Lee's Toy Review. He's got some great stuff. Uh, great seller. He's always got good stuff. He had this uh, really nice tri logo Tebow. Hard to say what what kind of grade it is. It's got a little bit of litho damage there from where the price sticker was apparently taken off. Probably a KB's overstock item, but that blister is really nice condition. It's got that etched edge blister which is common for a lot of these palatoy tri logos that ended up in the u.s market but you can see those etches um on all four sides of the blister i would say that's probably an 80 or 80 plus you know it's, it's all, it all depends on how they score that litho damage on the front of the card but i'd probably give that at a minimum an 80 but uh 197.50 was the final sales price on that that was a great deal i feel like for whoever got that one uh he also had this one which was the Tri-Logo Barada, another last 17. This one had some creasing uh, on the upper left-hand corner of the front of the card back coming off of the hole punch. Uh, probably an overall 75 would be my rough estimate on grade. A little bit of a crinkle there in the upper right-hand corner of the blister, but that one sold for $464. Pretty fair price, I feel like, for a mint-on-card Barada. Um, the big boy that he had was this one. It was probably an overall 70 grade at best. But this was a Tri-Logo, and that's probably more like a 60. It had a, it had a big crease going all the way across. But Tri-Logo Yak Face, this one had the weapon inside. Um, what's rare about this one is that this one had the Sand People uh, Gaffy Stick. And that's a common, not common, but it is a, 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 an error card, uh, a weapon error that, that, I, that you do see in, in a lot of the Facebook groups for 
the yak. Obviously, the yak face can come with the standard pike, you know, the force pike or whatever it is that he's loose graded with. He can come with no no weapon, or he can come with this one. I've seen a few other kind of wonky ones like palace blasters, things like that. But the gaffy stick is definitely the coolest, and that one sold for twenty one hundred dollars, twenty one eighty plus shipping. So probably like I said, about an overall sixty with that heavy creasing, but a very very cool item nonetheless. And um, finally, or second second to last, was this one. This was a very very rare Yoda tri logo, but he had the orange snake. Uh, typically, these tri Palatoy Trilogo Yodas were the were the brown snake version uh, with the darker green head, but the light green head with the orange snake, very, very uncommonly packed in on these Trilogos, and the price reflected that. It was a yellowed blister, very heavily yellowed, but uh, not one you see come up hardly ever, and that one sold for $4,161, so that price was, was pretty high, but... Um, you know, I know the buyer that bought this and, uh, he's got a pretty incredible Yoda collection. So kudos to him for, for picking it up. But, uh, that is a big number for, uh, an admittedly very, very rare, uh, tri logo orange snake Yoda. You just don't see that one pop up at all. Um, and then finally we had another last 17, just to round out some of the other last 17 we showed this one sold here yesterday for $522, the Luke Skywalker with his, uh, battle poncho. It looked to be, I'd say, probably 75 plus condition. It had a litho tear from the removal of the price sticker to the left of the hang tab. A couple of, you know, some minor edge wear, things like that. A uh, little crease down there in the lower left hand corner, but probably I would say an overall 75, 75 plus, maybe if you're lucky. But $522 took that one home. Um, anyway, just some really interesting data. The price points were all over the map. We got everything from 12 back A's with the SKU footer that sold for five figures uh, to the Yoda, the Tri-Logo Yoda with the orange snake. That That is a, a price record, I believe, that I've seen. The last one I saw, it was several years ago, that was closer to about $3,000. So the new high watermark is, is you know, over $4,000 for an orange snake Palatoy Tri-Logo Yoda. If you like this kind of information and you're new to the channel, I try to provide, you know, weekly updates on kind of some interesting vintage Kenner and vintage Palatoy, uh, foreign variants, loose graded, ungraded, all kinds of good stuff there. So consider subscribing as it helps out the channel. Please be sure to like the video if you liked it. To all my existing subscribers as well as my Patreon supporters, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon.